Hey folks, welcome to this Geometry Node tutorial. In this one, we're going to be talking about G Scatter. So this is a new add-on from the folks over at Grasswald, who are famous for their really beautiful ground cover plants. And they've gone ahead and released this free add-on for Geometry Nodes. It basically automates some of the steps and makes it a lot easier for you to really rapidly get your, your scattering done. So we're going to have a look at this. And also a little announcement, I have got a course Okay, well, first of all, I have a course on procedural shaders. This one's already out, uh, link down in the description. And there is gonna be a course that I've just finished making on geometry nodes. So this is like geometry nodes for beginners. If you are interested in getting into geometry nodes and you haven't really taken that step yet, then this is hopefully gonna be the course for you. So I will release more content on it closer to the release, but it will be coming out through Canopy Games as part of the Blender Creative series. So there we go, let's get into Blender. So G-Scatter works with 2.93 and higher. So we're going to be using it with 2.93 today. It just installs like a regular add-on and then you can go ahead and start scattering. So let's start with a basic setup. I'm just going to add a plane object. Let's scale it five times. And normally if we're working with geometry nodes, we would apply our scale. I mean, generally I would recommend that you do. However, with G-Scatter, you don't technically need to. Now I also want to just throw on some subdivisions on here. So I've just given it a few there, not many. And I'm going to chuck on another one and a displacement modifier just so that we can Get a little bit of variation in our surface. Make this a clouds texture, make it a bit higher. There we go, shade smooth. So this is all I'm gonna do for the ground here. And let's rename our object, ground. We have this ground object and let's say I wanted to scatter an object. So let's start with doing custom objects that we make. Um, so just for demonstration, let's use a Suzanne. I'm gonna make her a little bit smaller, bring her over here. And I might also add a few more. So let's do a cone object and a cube. There we go. So I've got three objects that I want to scatter on here. So I'm going to press N. I've got my G Scatter by Grasswald add-on on the right hand side now. So with this open, we have a few options. We have for a start the assets, then I'll get onto those in a moment. But first of all, let's just look at doing our custom objects. So we've got a surface that we can pick in our surface object. And then we can choose whether we want to scatter our selected objects as objects or as a collection. In this case, we're going to go for a collection. And now you can see that in our outliner, we have generated a new collection called, in this case, just collection. You could rename that if you wanted. And it's also created a new object. So we have our ground object still, but we also have the collection object and I can rename this in the G scatter add-on as well as the normal outliner. So I'm going to call this one primitives. Here we go and we can see that the object has been renamed in the outliner as well. So this is technically a separate object. It's not on the ground but you can see if we move the ground or if we start changing the ground mesh it all updates properly. So that's really interesting. It's actually a really nice way to work when you have a more complex setup and you have lots of these systems especially for ground cover plants where you've got grasses and long grasses and flowers and weeds and sticks and rocks and so many different things going on. It actually makes a lot of sense to have these as separate objects that can be easily shown, hidden, have values changed without diving into a massive node tree. The way that this works basically is you can select your thing in the outliner and basically set a bunch of things such as density. So we can change the density of these, make them super dense, make them not dense at all. We can change the position seed and this is really useful if you have multiple different scattering collections, they will be automatically given a different position seed. So you never get, you know, the same distribution. Then under this, we have this one, a vertex mask. So this is great. Basically, I can set my density to whatever I want. Let's say I was doing weeds and I just wanted a patch of weeds. So I'd set my density up to be right for the weeds. And then I could click on my vertex mask. You can see we've now gone into weight paint mode. So what I can do in here, make sure I'm painting with a weight of one. And now I can paint an area that I want my, in this case, primitives to be to be showing. And then maybe I could do like a lower density patch just in the middle there. So you can see that there's a bunch of things going on here. We have a lot of control and it's so easy to just, you know, click it. And also keyframeable. So if you need these to be keyframed for an animation, G-Scatter got you covered. Now we can also do scale. We can set the randomness. We can also say whether or not we want to follow the terrain normals or not. So for example, if you're scattering trees, you probably don't want to follow the terrain normals. You want them to go straight up. So that's really useful for that. And then you can set the base orientation and the orientation randomness in each axis. Some really useful stuff there. So because this is G scatter, it's made by the folks over at Grasswold, we can actually use Grasswold assets. So let me just delete all of these things. We're going to delete our primitives object. There we go. So we're just back to where we were before with just our ground object. And let's have a click on these two buttons. So at the top we have the shop 
where we can buy assets. And you can see that we can choose between multiple of these assets which are pre-made and these are from the folks at Grasswell. So you can guarantee that these are beautiful, beautiful assets and you can buy them directly from here. So these will link you through to the Grasswell checkout. And there's a bunch of stuff in here. You could get the full asset pack here. It's $69, but it's definitely worth it if you do this kind of production stuff. And you also have my assets. And these are ones which come with Gscatter, which is just insane. So you have creeping bent grass, which is beautiful. This is just like a normal kind of European common or garden grass. And then you have laurel leaves and flowers and all of this stuff. So it's a really great collection of free assets that comes with Gscatter. Now, if you are a Grasswold user, you probably also want to be able to use your Grasswold assets. And what you need to do is go into wherever you bought your assets from. So for me, I bought my assets from Gumroad. So if I go into my library and I scroll down a little bit, then we can see that we have the Grasswold asset pack for Gscatter. And it's just in here and we can click download, making sure that you're grabbing the Grasswold pack for Gscatter. And then in Gscatter, what we can do is we can actually install that new asset pack. So the Grasswold asset pack here. Let's go ahead and install these assets. There we go. And it said it's installed the file. So now if I go back to my assets, now we can see that we have all of these pages of assets. There's a lot in here. So this is the full Grasswold asset pack. So I'm just going to show you something really neat here. So let's just grab creeping bent grass small. This is one that comes with the free version. So we can grow clumps or singles, levels of detail. You can also set the material quality. So by default, I would generally set these to high. But if you're working on a bigger scene, then perhaps you don't want such high fidelity. Now you can either add them to the scene, in which case you'll just get the object, or you can set them to scatter, in which case you will get an immediate scattering setup. Let's hit scatter selected. There we go. It's updated. And now we can see on our object, we've got some grass here. I can hide my G scatter collection, select my object. And let's say I want to increase my displacement a little bit, make it a little bit steeper. And I'm also going to just increase my subdivisions, make it a bit smoother there. Now let's select creeping bent grass and we can change the density. Let's get a little bit higher. I'm going to go up to 100. And now what I can do is I can do a vertex mask. So let's paint some of these on. So let's paint around here, give it a higher weight. And I'm just going to paint them just in this patch. Here we go. And because it's grass, what you pretty much always want to do is increase the randomness a little bit on the scale and set your random Z rotation to be full. So you have a nicely scattered randomized collection. You can go a little bit higher here. Now, this is geometry nodes. So if I just open a new geometry nodes editor here at the bottom, we can see that we have this auto generated node tree. So this is all still connected to the Gscatter interface. However, it's geometry nodes. So it means that we can use geometry nodes tools still on this node tree. Why don't we have a go at adding some of the ETK nodes? Let's use ETK steep. So this basically allows us to limit the angle that things are on. So now what we're saying is that nothing that is steeper than 45 degrees will get distributed on. And I can change that value. So I can keep certain assets just to be on flat surfaces. There we go. We don't have anything on the steep slopes. And let's say that we have this being not quite as performant as we want. And we want to render a higher number of points. So at the moment we're rendering 252, but we're also looking at that in the viewport. So let's use the ETK utils, uh, the density switch up here. And I can just chuck this on. So by, let's say I wanted to have 500 render density and only 50 in the viewport. So that's a 0.1 is 10%. So now if we plug this into the density, it looks less. However, if we were to actually hit render, then we would get the full 500. You see if we hit the use render amount there. So this is still connected up to Gscatter. You know, we can still change all of these things in here. You know, I could change the scale. Even though I've started modifying the node tree, Gscatter is still going to work. So this is great especially if you're working in a team with artists and maybe some of you are technical and want to use the nodes and some of you are less technical and you want to use a UI. This is basically going to really speed you up. I'm really loving using it at the moment. And obviously I love nodes, but being able to do this to quickly flesh out my scene, just super quick, great, super helpful. There's not really a huge amount that I can kind of tutor you on because it is such a simple add-on to use. So hopefully this has made you realize that you, you should be using it. Check the link down in the description if you want to grab a copy and enjoy the scene that we're going to make with it now. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm kind of gutted. I just realized that my uh, my mic had dropped out. Very sad. Anyway, this is a scene that we just made. I just spent like half an hour doing this. I'm going to make a new one now so that you get to see it. But it's so easy to put these things together with this add-on. And they look great because the, you know, the assets that come with it, it's a free add-on. It's insane. They just look so good. They look so good. I hadn't done everything I wanted anyway, so this is fine. So starting with a plane, let's make this full screen. I know some people, when they have issues with recording and tutorials and things, they will 
restart properly, but I quite like doing YouTube in sort of a bit more of a laid back way. It's more of just hanging out with pals. So let's come in here, subdivide a couple times. Let's give this a few, let's apply that modifier. Give it another one, give it a displacement, which I will turn on in edit mode, just so I get to see this as I edit. Here we go. A little bit of distortion there, give it a shade smooth. I just like to start with this before I even start shaping it, just so I know ground is going to have something to work with. I'm going to do something slightly different this time. The last one was good, but it was difficult for me to um, really find. So I'm going to add a couple things from Botanic as well. These are just going to be rocks because I want some rocks and trees because I want some shadows. But you can just do this with a tree alpha and some rocks from Sketchfab or something. I just really love their rocks. I think Botanic have done a great job putting together some really beautiful rock scans like in these two. Well, let's just create a little bit of a bit of drama. My uni teachers always used to say that. It's like, oh, it's got to have drama. I did uh, interior design and creating drama, dramatic atrium spaces. That was like, that was the thing. I feel like it's going to age really badly as well. It's one of those things which is very much like 20... 17 to 2020 people wanting big dramatic atrium spaces and you you know you go in and it opens up and it's a multi-floor space because open plan is kind of dying you know people don't really want open plan spaces open plan offices anymore they're kind of realizing that actually people like to have their own space uh, let me add a couple trees here i'm gonna add this maple just because it's a little bit open so it's gonna be giving some better shadows at least around the top and i'll just pull this off to the side Okay, so that's me done for Botanic. Gee scatter. Oh, actually, just before I do kick it in, let's grab our... I'm using the red clovers from Grasswold, just because I think they look really good. So, big clump, copy these objects. And let's paste them into here. Okay, let's pull those off to the side. And I want to set up my camera super early because I want to do everything like the least scattering possible because I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something dumb. We're going to create dew and in the course that I've just finished making for Geometry Nodes 2.93, going to be released soon, don't know if I mentioned, but uh, that, uh, I, I talk about instancing in one of the, I do like a, a couple of lectures, one of them's on like instances and I literally say in that lecture that like one of the, you know, sometimes you want to work on something that you've instanced after, like create real meshes out of it but it can be really heavy. And the example I give is grasses, grass fields, because you can create so many instances of grass. And then as soon as you put another node after it, your computer just dies. I think I've got everything that I need. Let's grab G-Scatter, select our ground mesh, and we're going to grab a bunch of these. So we're going creeping bent grass big, scatter selected, creeping bent grass small, scatter selected, ribwort plantain, scatter selected, and ribwort plantain flower. Now let's just turn all of these off for now. And then I can also just do this final one where I'm going to grab my red clovers, scatter as a collection. Let's rename this one to red clover. There we go. And let's also turn that one off. Great. I'm going to hide that G scatter collection and I'm going to set up the camera. Add a camera, control alt zero to make the camera at the view. We're going to go for a different aspect. Focal length, I'm going to go quite high. I'm going to go 200. I want to go, I feel like something like this would be pretty cool and then let's just move our camera to our cameras collection and also add an empty sphere in here this is going to be our focus depth of field to the focus there we go so cool thing about super long focal lengths is it makes depth of field even more beautiful because it kind of accentuates it and it also flattens the background and foreground into your like your focal point it's a good look if you like that kind of National Geographic super flat nature photography look. G scatter. Creeping bent grass small. Let's do a vertex paint because I want to make sure that I'm just working in the field of view here. There we go. So I can see that. Now I have videos on how to do this with dynamic paint. So I have an add on with a camera call node. You have lots of options for making things just fit within your view. I am just doing it this way because it's so easy to and with a setup like this that nothing is going to be moving uh, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense not to let's make sure we are randomizing our z rotation and we are randomizing our scale a little bit 
it out, let's go into creeping bent grass large. So this is our tall bent grass. Make it a little bit denser. Vertex mask again. This time we're going to be painting these around our rocks. So my thinking here is that somebody couldn't really cut these unless they had a strimmer and it's probably going to grow more in this vertical randomized Z. Turn on the randomized scale. There we go. Next one, ribwort plantain. Again, turn on the vertex mask. I'm going to paint these up around the back and a couple there. Let's make these ones smaller actually. So we're going to come away from the density and we're going to come into these. There we go. Just making those a bit shorter there with that other vertex group. Oh, it's just so easy to paint these in. It's great. Flower clumps. I love these ones. We're going to turn off follow terrain normals, turn on rotation, turn on random scale, turn on the vertex mask. Okay, let's paint these in, make them a bit denser, and then I'll turn it down again. Ooh, so I just control Z and you see things have gone a little bit awry. We've lost our UI. So let's just save. Blender actually has an option here, which you can press shift control, control shift W, or you can just click save and reload. It's actually a really useful option here. It'll reload your scripts and things, so you can use this to bring back an add-on. Don't forget this is in beta, so so I can just paint some of these around here. Let's add a little bit more randomized scale. I'm going to bring down the weight on these a little bit. Okay, finally we're going to add red clover. Let's make sure that we have these in the right place. Get some in the foreground here. It's going to be out of focus, but hey, just to make sure they're there. So it's all looking pretty good so far. Let's just give this a save, turn, come out of the vertex mask, and I'm going to change the position seed until I find something open in the middle. And then I'm going to grab a couple of these red clover flowers that are single flowers. Grab this one, I'll grab this one, shift D, and I'm just going to move these to my main collection. These, I'm just putting in the middle of the scene. So I'm hand positioning my sort of hero assets. And while I do this, finish setting up the camera and set up the lighting and things like that. So I'm going to need a shader editor so I can change my world shader. I know it's very tempting to use HDRIs, but use a sky texture instead. This thing is incredible, immediately beautiful. Come down a little bit on my elevation so it feels like sunrise. And I want to bring it down so that the light catches through. I want my hero flower to be in light and... I'm going to want my tree to be casting a bunch of shadow on the foreground, I think. This is starting to look pretty good. But I do want the camera to be slightly higher. Move it up slightly while looking at our hero flower. Oopsie daisy. And I might also come into the scene just a little bit. I want to make sure that we have some of the ribwort plantain flowers around here as well. So let's bring these and this forwards. And we'll just tweak some of these. So ribwort plantain, let's change this until we have something that we like the look of. Oh, you see, there we go. So we have some there now. We can move these back to next to this. I just really love how they look. I think I actually do want these to be forwards. I do find with working on this kind of thing, when you're just kind of doing your own thing, making stuff, just to kind of see what comes out of it, you can tweak for days. You can spend so long on this stuff. Now I'm just going to put something in the foreground here. Don't like how, not empty, but uh, let's get some more of the ribwork plantain in here. So let's just kind of bring in a little bit more, paint some in, basically just trying to make it look populated. That's the goal here. I want the scene to feel natural. Real life is incredibly dense. That's what you find. So I'm just trying to look at this from different angles, see how it goes. So we, we do have a super dense distribution here. So I'm quite liking how this is looking at the moment. To take this a little bit further, we're going to add a bunch more stuff. So for a start, let's hop into geometry nodes. And the important thing here is for me to get the grass just cold to my camera. So I'm going to use some of my ETK nodes here. 
Let's grab ETK Utils Camera Curl and let's drop this onto the noodle like so. Doing this so everything's just disappointed, just disappeared because we do not have a camera set. Grab the camera and we also need to find out what the field of view is. Copy this as a new data path, sorry, as a new driver. And then let's hop back into Creeping Bent Grass and paste driver. There we go. So visibly nothing has changed, but we have a considerably less amount of grass than we did before. If I mute and unmute, you can see the massive difference there. Performance wise, that's gonna be huge when it comes to doing what we're about to do, which is which is not recommended. Feel free to copy along. We're gonna be adding dew drops, dew drops to all of our grass. Came up with a nice little shader for doing dew earlier. It's super simple as well. Taking our point instance, I can't believe I'm doing this, and then we're gonna point distribute on the grass. This is where it gets really heavy and slow. So I'm gonna pause cycles because I don't want it to be computing, especially not while I'm recording this. And okay, so point distribute is on. Uh, attribute randomized because we wanna be randomizing the scale of these dew drops. Oh, it's tanking a little bit. It's funny because the grass is so low area that you have to have such a high density for this to actually work properly. So I'm just going to set up the nodes first and I'm going to create some dew drops that we're going to be instancing as a collection. So point instance, I'm just leaving this all as defaults really. I might set a minimum for like 0.5 or something. Now I could be doing this with G scatter, but I don't know how well it works scattering on things which it's made. So just for now, I'm going to sort out all the scattering myself. Okay, so turn off whole collection because we're not going to be scattering a whole collection as one block, we're gonna be scattering a few different things. So let's come over here and let's use icospheres. We need to be way smaller. So let's just make sure that we're working in the collection right now. I'm just gonna turn off all of the uh, things that we've got scattering because this is, oh God, that's so much better. Okay, let's move these to a new collection that we're gonna call Dew, like so. And I'm just gonna basically make a bunch of things like this. Apply rotation and scale, shade smooth. And we're also gonna scale these down, way down. I don't know how big these should be, about um, but bigger than this, probably about two millimeters across. Now we have some dew drops and we're gonna be positioning them on our grass. So I need my creeping bent grass small back. This is the one which is absolutely tanking the performance. We can grab our dew collection. And then if you want your dew to appear, because the grass surface area is so small, we need to go to some crazy high density, like 10,000. I'm going to start. No, I'm going to go straight to 10,000. I really hope this doesn't crash. So fingers crossed. I see some dewdrops. Oh, they are everywhere. Excellent. This is perfect. Very, very slow, but technically is working. So that's, you know, really all I could hope for. And now I can just join this back up so you can understand now why I thought it was important to put on the camera call first because we are creating thousands of dew drops and I'm joining this up to the outside. So now we should get our grass back. Excellent. Now these dew drops look a pretty good size actually. So that was about two millimeters across and now we're going to have a look at the shader for them. Shader editor, grab one of these icospheres, change to object, create a new one called dew. And in a sec, we might just turn on cycles again. We were, we're going to be using glass BSDF. And I know a lot of shader people out there are just like, why? But we do actually want the volume scatter and we do actually want the refraction. So even though it's going to be heavier, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. So this is how you make dew that looks all right. Glass BSDF. I'm going to drop this on here. And then we can grab an input Fresnel node. And then a map range because you know you want this is the thing with dew is let's just have a look at what it looks like now it probably looks okay now just with glass shader we don't see a lot but we're getting nice and close here then we can see there is some dew going on on this grass okay i hate to say it but we're going to need more dew we don't have anywhere near enough however we can actually have a good look at the shader while we're here so this is loading relatively quickly. So I'm just going to make sure that we get to try out this shader just while we're here. So to begin with, there's some dew like so. Okay, so we've got some drops on here. And at the moment, it just looks like they just look like glass balls because that's what they are. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have some real good Fresnel going on. We want to basically illuminate 
the outside. So the outer ring ends up looking like it's catching a lot more light. Up range, this on here like so. And now we have zero in the middle, so let's bring this into like 0 0.2, 0 0.05 for the black bit in the middle. Nice, so now you can see we have a patch which is just gonna be normal glass and a patch which we can set to be higher than normal glass. So one is gonna be like white, it's gonna be clear glass. And then the outside is gonna be three. So it's actually technically breaking energy conservation. However, I want this to look magical and glistening. And to do that, we are allowed to break energy conservation. This is why we're 3D artists. And there you have it, there you go. So I can just show you that with the extra bright edges and without. So obviously it looks more natural without, however, kind of more visible and pretty with. Kind of catches it more in the way that you sort of expect almost from from dew in photos like this. Now you could always make it a bit more subtle, maybe two on your outer rim. But we are going to go back in geometry nodes and we're going to push it even further. We're going to go even higher on the density. Keeping bent grass small. Coming to our dew. It's at 10,000 now. Let's double it. Did I save? So now what we can do is we can do our final camera, set up a render. Wait, I was going to show you my bumblebee. We're going to put a bee in this scene. I will want to actually set up the camera properly before we get the bee involved. The bee is cool because the bee is animated with geometry nodes. Let's put the bee here. I might just frame up those dew nodes and then we can just put them on a bunch of things. So we can put them on the plantain flowers and we can put them on the these two flowers as well. So just so nothing outside the node graph is loading, we're gonna come in here and we can actually work a little bit quicker if we get rid of all of our 3D viewports. So control G to put these into a group. I'm gonna to wanna to put my density onto the front because I can't have 20,000 density on everything we put this on. Dew, okay. So now I have my dew quick group, saving me some time here. Let's come back into our UI. We can grab our plantain flowers and just in here we can add our dew node group. Can't reiterate this enough. Make sure you are saving your work while creating these ridiculous scenes. I just really want to get some like dew drops hanging off these. I just think that'll look great. Definitely too many on there. So we can go down to like maybe 8,000 for these tall ones. There we go. So we've got some on there. And now what I want to do is I want to actually probably join these two together just so I only have to do this once. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is actually drop the dew onto this red clover flower. So we've made a geometry nodes and in here we can add dew and a join geometry and then we can just put dew everywhere. I'm gonna be giving this not loads density. Let's take this down to like 5,000. I don't want these to be covered in water. Let's chuck on a join geometry here. All right, that looks pretty good. I may turn this up a little bit more. Okay, so this is the B. And the B is pretty cool because it's this B scan that I found on Sketchfab by Thomas Flynn. So shout out to him, link in the description. But its wings are kind of broken and it's, you know, it's not really intact. If you just cut off the wings and then I made a couple of new wings with uh, just a picture of a wing and cut it out, Ian Hubert style, and then you look at this so all i've done is i have the wing and i've mirrored it but before this i have geometry nodes and what the geometry nodes does is it animates the wing beats it doesn't just animate them up and down you can see it's actually turning the wing nice so this is like actual flying if you were to render this with motion blur so you can see that we're actually getting motion blur how cool is that so I can go for like almost none. Awesome. So this is just a really cool way to, and super easy as well, right? Okay, I'm just gonna copy these, control C, copy objects into our scene. Oh God, this is, I hope this doesn't stop responding. I'm actually just gonna change that left-hand one to a text editor. Mute my grass because it's absolutely killing it. Now what I can do, Is I can move this bad boy over here, just coming into land. And let's bring back our bent grass and think about doing a render. 
I hope this kind of playtime stream. I'm sorry, it wasn't much of a tutorial, but hopefully it was of some value. <laughs> you should be using Gscatter. That's the point of this video. You should be using it because it's going to just, well, I mean, you saw there. It's so easy and it makes it so much fun. I, I love nodes, of course. I mean, this whole channel is about nodes, but just being able to have a UI where it's like, okay, scatter this, scatter this, scatter this. We just paint that around, saves you so much time, so much time, just having those presets made for you. And they've got some really cool things coming down the line as well. I had a chat with some of them about the future of Gscatter and it's looking real positive. So get it, it's free. Comes with some really great production ready assets. So thanks for watching. Hope this was fun. Hope this was informative and I will catch you in the next one. See you later.